Mr. Commissioner, honored guests, Hall of Famers, ladies and gentlemen, and baseball fans everywhere. This truly is a glorious day that the Lord has made. And I'd like to extend my congratulations to Murray and Lon and Dennis. It's an honor to be going in with you guys today. So congratulations. To, to Jane Clark, Dale Petrosky, Jeff Idelson, Kim Bennett, and the entire staff at the Hall, I just want to thank you for making these last few months so special for me and my family. And to the Baseball Writers Association of America, you know, what can I say? Thanks for voting for me. Uh, and I guess not holding being a DH against me. It's such a privilege to stand before you today. The journey that brought me here to Cooperstown was an amazing one, and I'd like to share some of that with you today. You know, I grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota. My mom and dad, six sisters and a brother. I loved all sports, but baseball was my passion. When that snow would begin to melt and that grass would start to peek through in the springtime, it was time for baseball. My dad and I used to go out in the backyard and we had the perfect heights of a fence for a young aspiring major leaguer to have to leap to his utmost to just steal that home run away. And my dad and I could play that game for hours. I was a huge fan of the Minnesota Twins growing up, and I remember listening to all the games on the radio, waiting to see if my favorite player, Harmon Killebrew, would hit one out. And that 65 series against the Dodgers, for a nine-year-old kid, that was really something. He had Drysdale and Sandy match it up against guys like Harmon and Tony. Couldn't get much better than that. I started my Little League days on the fields of Highland Groveland, and then went on to Linwood and Oxford Playgrounds. You know, I used to play on a couple of teams per summer, and uh, I also had a summer job, which was caddying, which was my first job, and I'd always have to ask the caddy master, you know, I, I gotta leave early for my games tonight. You know, finally, he had to offer me the ultimatum, you know, what do you wanna do, make money or play baseball? And uh, yeah, I guess I learned later on that you could do both. As I got older, my passion grew, and my dreams became more vivid. I played ball at school, of course, first at St. Luke's and St. Paul, and, on, and then on to Creighton High School, which I know is very well represented here today. Got a couple hundred in on a charter. I'm grateful to all the coaches that I had growing up who sacrificed their time to help kids like me learn the great game of baseball. But there was one coach who really stood out as being particularly helpful and influential for me both as a ball player and as a young man. And his name is Bill Peterson. I played for Bill for almost six years. He was my coach for VFW, American Legion High School. And, uh, you know, he just had a way with our club. Our practices were always full of energy and a lot of chatter, people running all over the place. Anytime we'd have a bad practice, we'd have to line up for a half an hour and do head first slides. So, but those were the exception because Bill had a way of bringing out the best of all of us every day. Bill just also happened to have coached Dave Winfield. Not bad. Two kids from St. Paul find their way to Cooperstown and both come through Bill Peterson's program. So thanks for everything, Billy P. It was on to the University of Minnesota, play for Dick Siebert and George Thomas. I'm indebted to the university for giving me the chance to continue my education as well as play for a legendary college coach who we fondly refer to as the chief. Dickler was, Dick was a stickler for fundamentals, and when you practice indoors for two months in the wintertime, you get pretty good at them. And one of the reasons I think I got to the major so quickly was that because of Dick's program, I was fundamentally sound, as Dan Patrick would say, and I know Chief was the one who helped me get that way. During my time at Minnesota, I played in a collegiate summer league out in Grand Junction, Colorado, for a man named Sam Suplicio, and even though my summer was cut short when I broke my jaw, Sam and I became good friends and remain that way today. I appreciate you, Sammy. I was, uh, I was drafted by the Brewers after my junior year. A uh, couple of scouts, Tony Siegel and Dee Fondi, thought I was worthy of a first round selection. Went on to Burlington, Iowa to play for the Bees under Dennis Mankey. And uh, it was a great summer in Burlington, you know, winning down there, the Midwest League. And Dennis helped me realize if I was ever going to get to the major leagues, it wasn't going to be as a power hitter. So. I can that idea and start trying to learn how to hit the ball to all fields. It was out of my first major league camp in 78. You know, I survived some pretty ugly days early in camp, as, as most rookies have. 
There was even one day when Frank Howard asked me if the scout was drunk when he signed me. <laughs> but somehow I made the opening day roster largely due in part to an injury to Robin. And it was the beginning of a very memorable 15 years in Milwaukee. Yes, it was. Harry Dalton and the organization put together quite an amazing team back then, and we had quite a cast of characters. But when you put us all together, we could really play. We knew how to have fun, and we knew how to win. In 1982, we waited until the last day of the season to win the division, and then, of course, falling behind the Angels 0-2 before coming back. And the Brewers finally had themselves their first World Series. I'll always remember late in Game 5 of the playoffs, Cecil Cooper had a big hit. He drove in Jimmy Gantner and Charlie Moore, and uh, uh, an inning later, Rodney hit a ball to Robin at short, and he threw over to Cecil, and County Stadium just went ballistic. I think it was the loudest I ever heard that place. Unfortunately, the Cardinals took us down in Game 7, and I think Ozzy probably remembers that one, wherever is Ozzy at, so. I'd like to thank Commissioner Selig for his leadership and friendship while he owned the Brewers. Bud was a great owner to play for, and he was a true fan of the game. His door was always open, and I often took advantage. We had some great talks about a lot of different things, or as Bud would say, a plethora of things. I learned a great deal from Mr. Seeley. One, one of the best parts about my time in Milwaukee, and I see both of their jerseys over there, was that Robin Yao and Jim Gantner were my teammates the entire time I was there. In fact, we set the record for longest tenure for three teammates on one team at 15 years. You know, Jimmy was what I would call an overachiever, uh, and that's not a knock. It's just he wasn't really picked to be a, a major league player, and somehow he put together an incredible 17-year career. And, you know, I, I just got to share a couple of Jimmy's stories. Uh, Jimmy had a way with the English, English language that would make Yogi proud. Uh, I'll give you a couple examples. There's a time Jimmy, Jimmy got in a rundown, and, and somehow he found a way to make contact with the infielder. And he looked at the umpire and he started yelling, that's construction, that's construction. <laughs> and and we, I remember doing a clinic with one time for kids and Jimmy was talking about hitting and the importance of balance. And he was talking about, you know, you got to make sure you stay on the palms of your feet. You know, that'll keep you locked in. Anyways, those are just a couple of Gumbyisms for you. What can I say about Robin? You know, I, I learned so much from Robin. Uh, Although we were, con we were contemporaries in age, he had played in the big, e big leagues for four years before I got there. You know, Robin had a simple philosophy about playing. What can I do to help my team win today? And believe me, there was a lot of things that Robin Yao could do to help his team win. I'm honored to follow him into the hall as the second player to wear a Brewer's hat on his plaque. Well, the... Uh, the fans of Milwaukee and Wisconsin were always tremendously supportive. There were so many days when I'd arrived at County Stadium and there'd already be 10 to 15,000 people in the parking lot five hours before game time. I, I think it's pretty obvious they invented tailgating. Uh, and I'll always remember the parade that you put on us for, in 1982, even though we lost. I always told people, judging by the reaction of the crowd that day, you would never have been able to have could tell if did, did we win or we lose. That's, that's how supported we felt as players. So thank you, Milwaukee fans, for making my time there so special. It was, uh, it was on to Toronto in 93, and I want to thank Paul Beeston and Pat Gillick for bringing me in to try to help the Blue Jays defend their title of 92. Defend it, we did. And uh, it had been 11 years since I had been into a World Series, and I was determined to savor every moment. And then there was the moment. With Joe Carter's home run, I was finally able to enter the winner's circle. I'm indebted to the Jays organization for the opportunity, and I'd like to thank them, along with the Blue Jay fans, who showed up four million strong in 93 for giving me three great years in the beautiful city of Toronto. It was, it was time to go back home, complete the circle. Terry Ryan brought me back to to Minnesota to play for the team that I followed as a kid. My friends and family could hop in the car and drive down to the Metrodome just like the old days on the playground. You know, I remember the fans giving me a standing ovation my fir first at bat back in the Metrodome, and I, I, 
I also remember promptly honoring it by striking out. But I had three very enjoyable years in Minnesota, playing for Tom Kelly, who I learned a great deal from. And once again, I was able to follow Dave Winfield's path, and you know, I got my 3,000 hit back at home playing for the Twins. And remarkably, uh, we did it on the exact same date. So Dave and I's career had a lot of parallels. The only downside, going back to Minnesota, other than not winning enough games, was that I had hoped to have a chance to play with Kirby Puckett. And we all know Puck had to retire, unfortunately, at the start of the 96 season with glaucoma. And it would have been great, but Puck, I'm happy to be on your team now. So appreciate you, brother. I'd like to thank all the managers I had a chance to play for, all the teammates I had a chance to play with, and all my coaches who helped me become a better player. There's, as you can imagine, too many to name, but I'm grateful to all of them. The baseball memories are great, but when you think about it, the people memories are even better. Just to change gears a little bit to talk about friends and family. First of all, I got some buddies here from Minnesota, Kevin, Sean, Bruce, and Danny. I, you guys have been through it all with me, and uh, it was great to play golf with you yesterday, so I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, Greg Grow was my pastor when I was in Milwaukee, and we developed a mentoring relationship that's been going on for many years now. Greg, our trip together to India was one of my life's greatest moments. You encouraged me with how you serve the Lord in your work and in your life. As, our, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. Greg, you've helped me more than you know. To John Boggs, the man who knows my heart, my joys, and my struggles, you cannot be more loyal than this man. John, our friendship is unique, and I value it very much. And I know I give you a hard time when you call me all the time, but don't ever stop, all right? Ron Simon has been my attorney and friend since 1977. Through thick and thin, Ron, you've never wavered. I'm grateful for your guidance, your wisdom, and your friendship. Your courage has been remarkable battling Parkinson's for many years now, yet you've never complained and you've always found something positive. You're a fighter and you're a winner. Well. To all my aunts and uncles, nephews and nieces and cousins, all like 9,000 of you, I've, I'm so glad that you all came from all over to be here. It means a lot to me, so thank you. To my sisters, Mary Alice, Carol, Vicki, Angie, Judy, and Barbie, we've been through a lot together. Thank you for loving me and supporting me through this life of baseball. You know, in some ways it's kept us apart, in other ways it's brought us very close together. And I might not have thought this when I was young, but it's crystal clear to me now that I'm very blessed to have six sisters. <laughs> to my brother David, I don't know what it would be like to have a brother who's a professional athlete, but if I did, I hope I would have been a brother to him like you've been to me. You know, you've always taken the high road, and I'll always remember the letter that you sent me when you opened up your heart. It's been great to have you share in this journey with me. I appreciate you. My mom, Kathleen, was a huge baseball fan. When I, was one, when I was young, excuse me, she shared stories of how she used to go to Lexington Park in St. Paul to watch the minor league games. She talked of seeing the likes of Willie Mays and Roy Campanella coming through the Twin Cities. You know, somehow amidst raising eight kids, she managed, me, managed to see me play a lot of games. But my mom always thought she was a jinx. You know, she'd come to the games and she'd watch him from her car, or she'd hide behind the tree. And it was strange because it continued even to the major leagues. You know, I'd leave her, her seats in the family section and couldn't find her. You know, she'd walk around looking for an empty seat. It's, it was kind of like, where's Waldo? You know, where's, where's my mom? But I'll certainly never forget all that my mom did for me. Uh, we had the most incredible visit in spring training so shortly before she suddenly passed away in 1988. And it was just very open and very intimate. It was like that she knew she'd be going to heaven soon. So I thank God for giving us that special time. And I miss you and I love you, Mom. So. Yeah. My, uh, my dad, Richard, had tremendous work ethic. And that's probably the number one thing that I learned from him. 
He found a way to support eight kids and keep us all very happy. He was never the kind of dad to put pressure on his kids. He'd have a pat on the back for a well-played game and a word of encouragement when I would stink, basically. Never really meddled in my business, just, hey, go out there and have some fun. It was uh, just two years ago that my dad was courageously battling cancer, and thankfully I was working in Minnesota at the time, and I, and I got to see him quite a bit. We had some, you know, great talks during that summer. You know, one of my sisters shared with me that he had told his doctors that they, they better get him healthy because he had a date in Cooperstown in two years. And uh, I know how much he wanted to be here. So, words, words I'll never forget. Were my dad's to me the last time I saw him. He said, I'm so proud to have you as my son, and I love you. And so, I love you too, Dad. I miss you. Okay. All right. To my daughter, Blair, you're such a beautiful person, and you, you matured into such an incredible young woman. And I know that you had to sacrifice a lot because your dad played baseball, and I traveled, and I worked. But what the memories we do have, they mean so much to me. I love you very much and I'm very proud of you and I'm really glad you're here. So, Joshua, I know that better days are ahead for us. Linda, I know that you made many sacrifices as well. Your unselfishness allowed me to immerse myself in baseball while you cared for Blair and I'm grateful for the things that you did for me. To my wife, Destiny, I'm a blessed man to have had you come into my life. You have given me much love and happiness, as well as our precious daughter, Julia. I love you very much. And to Julia, I know at 11 months, you're too young to understand me now, but I want you to know how much joy you bring me and how much your daddy loves you. To you both, I'm excited about what our future brings. I'd like to thank God for his many, many blessings in my life, including my salvation that he's allowed me through his son, Jesus. I know the gift of this I had to play this game came from him. You know, why someone can hit a 95 mile an hour fastball and someone else can certainly isn't something you can take credit for. So Lord, I give you all the glory for the things you've allowed me to accomplish, including being inducted to the Hall of Fame. My time's almost up, I'm, but in closing, you know, my dreams never took me to Cooperstown. Like most of these guys, and probably all of them, you know, I, I didn't play the game to get here. I played the game because I loved it. That being said, it's the Hall of Fame. It's that magical place. It's that place that transcends time, where baseball is respectful, traditional, simple, and pure. You know, I look behind me, and I see a group of incredible men. Some of these men are the gentlemen that helped fuel my passion as a youngster. And then there are other men that I had a chance to either compete with, compete against, or play with. And of course, there are the other Hall of Famers who aren't able to be here today. Together, they compile an amazing fraternity of baseball brothers that parallel the history of this great game. And I want to thank them all for making me feel so welcome and embracing me into the family of the Hall of Fame. And all the fans that came out today, I appreciate you more. You more than you know, sharing in this day with me. Thank you, everybody, and God bless you.